It's finally E3 season. This is my favorite time of the year every single year. Even though it is a little different this year, it's still really exciting to have new things to talk about, new game announcements and demos. And that's what we're going to talk about today is Obsidian's demo for Grounded. It's really interesting that we get to play this game so soon. I actually wasn't expecting this to come out for a fair while, but we've got a demo at the moment and Obsidian have given everyone a bit of a taste of this game before it comes out in game preview as part of the announcements that are happening. So what kind of game is it? Grounded is a survival adventure game where you're shrunken down to the size of an ant and tasked with surviving in the typical backyard. The sense of scale in the world is like the first thing you immediately notice when you come out of the ground. You, you know, there's a baseball next to you and the, the sense of charm in the world and obviously you're in the size of an ant. So, you know, you find things like a soda can and a pot plant and they're just massive. And that sense of scale and wonder is really shown well in the game and it does give it its own unique flair and walking through the grass. And it's a really minor thing, but you know, when bigger creatures move through the grass, you can see the grass parting to move for them. It, it's just a really nice world. Like I think they've done a very good job at building worlds. And we do know Obsidian are talented, especially at building worlds with things like the Outer Worlds, obviously Fallout New Vegas back in the past and, and the Pillars of Eternity games that they've made as well. It's not all charming as you explore. There are many bugs, ants, and other creatures roaming around the yard as well as yourself. Lots of spiders too. If you do have arachnophobia, there is like a cool option in the menu where you can change how these spiders look from, you know, being a typical spider, you can remove some of their legs and you can actually make them look like a weird abomination that looks absolutely nothing like a spider. So in a way it's better, I guess, but they still look pretty uh, horrifying to me anyway, and I, I don't have arachnophobia. If you are scared of these spiders or the weird abominations, you can tackle the world with up to three friends, not in this demo, but you will be able to at the game launch. What you can do is explore and co-op and quest together. There it doesn't appear to be much more that you can do other than with the three people. It's not going to add too much to the experience. It just seems that you'll have other people in the world that you can explore and build and craft and kill these horrifying spiders with together. As with a lot of survival games, there is the typical base building that you would expect. There's shelters and tools and they're critical to your survival. Build epic bases to protect you and your stuff from the insects and the elements. You can craft weapons, tools and armor, allowing you to better fight, explore and survive. The crafting works basically how you would expect but there is a little kind of hitch to it where you have to analyze some of the materials you find at this analyzation station, whatever it's called. Analyzation station, I think that's a good name. Analyzation station, that's what we're gonna call it. You analyze the materials that you find and then that will allow you to craft new things like the ax and spear and, and other items that you find as well. As you do find things, new items out in the world, you will learn different crafting materials as well. But this is kind of the primary way that your progression around the crafting will come from is from this analyzation station, as we're gonna call it. I did find that the UI was a little bit cumbersome because you do have to switch between different tabs for most things. I'm not sure why it's not all presented in the one tab, especially the fact that even in the crafting menu, you have to flick between different categories in order to choose what you wanna craft. So, you know, for crafting an ax, you have to go to one category to craft a specific item and then go back to the ax tab to use that item to craft the ax. It's a little bit cumbersome. I wouldn't say it's a great system. It would be better if these were all presented at least on the one screen and I'm personally not a huge fan of having to craft one item in order to craft another item. I would rather do that under the one thing. Maybe if I could at least go to the ax and click craft, if I had the requirements, it would craft that other item for me as well. I know Raft does this, which is another survival game. It, it gives me that Animal Crossing feeling where, you know, I have to craft something and then go back out to the menu and then craft something again just to make that, that final item I'm looking for. I would much rather it be in the one menu, especially with your inventory being in a separate screen as well. It just seems a bit cumbersome to have to flick between the options at the top all the time. An interesting thing about this game that is different to a lot of the other survival games that you would be used to is that this game appears to be in a handcrafted world. It's not procedurally generated, which is the common trope in this genre. Grounded is really grounded in its own reality. See what I did there? It does seem the world itself is handcrafted and I have played the demo a couple of times. Pro tip, you can just keep clicking on single player and playing the demo over and over again. You don't keep your progress, but you do get that 30, 30 minute timer reset every time. 
The story premise for the game is that you don't really know what happened to you, how you got so small. You're trying to investigate this new world and these strange machines that seem to be appearing up in the world. You do get the first part of this quest as part of this demo. You can't progress it too far. And it seems that fixing these machines will allow you to return to normal human size. And there's also mention in one of the trailers about this mysterious possible other race or something that's down there that's watching you. We don't really know much more about it, but Obsidian are very good storytellers. And with this handcrafted world and, you know, things that we've seen them do in the past, I feel like they're really going to do a good, decent story into this game, which is something that we really don't see in survival games. Most of them have a very generic story, if any, to be honest. And it, it's good that this is something that is important to the game itself. And it is only being made by a small team at Obsidian. You know, I think it's under 15 people. This isn't their next big title that they're going to be pushing. And we know we are aware they're working on the Outer Worlds DLC as well as some other games as well now that they're owned by Microsoft. It will be interesting to see how this game goes and its lifespan and if it is supported after its initial release and if they keep adding to the game. It is interesting and I've enjoyed what I played and I would like to play more. And I'm definitely going to pick it up on the game preview on July 28th and play a bit more and, and probably talk about a bit more on the channel as well to see what you guys think about it and give you my general opinions because I do enjoy these survival games as kind of like a casual experience. I wouldn't say that I'm heavily into the survival genre, but I do enjoy them. You know, we did talk about Fallout 4 survival mode on this channel way back in the past and if you are interested in the game itself, leave a comment below if you've played the demo and what you think about it. You know, we're going to get more information on this game as it comes out, but information at the moment is pretty scarce. So I would be interested to see what everyone's opinion on the 30 minute demo that we get is obviously pro tip. You can just start again after your 30 minutes, you just lose your progress. I did that a couple of times, did a bit of exploring. It is good to do, you know, when, when there's no real impact to just losing your save file because you know it's going to go anyway. But that's all from me today. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and on Twitch. I stream three days a week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, Australian night times. Thank you for watching. My name is Norza, and I hope you have a great day.